morning everybody it's thursday and i am on the east coast so i got to sleep in just a little bit <laughs> and i will see say this was literally for me the topic was for me the whole thing was for me so i pray that this is also for you and that you get something out of it so i'm just going to break it down how i wrote my notes and um I guess just in a way that I can still understand for myself. So 1 Kings 18, 41 through 46. Um, we'll just skip down to 42, where it talks about how Elijah bowed down and put his face between his knees. And I think it was Minister Teresa who said this yesterday when we were talking yesterday on um, the outpour call last night when we were talking about Anna, which I'd never heard of her before, um, how she said, Anna positioned herself to receive greater. And just the way that he positioned himself to even start praying was nothing that he's, um, nothing that we, in a normal way that we pray, like we're usually, you know, on our knees or laying prostrate. So it was a different um, position for him to pray just in general. And I can attest to that because, um, you know, this year has been actually since the end of last year has been a journey for me to grow my prayer life. And for me, that is, that is my, um, my new position, I guess you can say my learning position to start in prayer for anything. So that's that's what I got out of that. And then I've just I've just never been praying as much as I have now, which is great. And honestly, I love it. So like I'll even go to the store and I've I've asked uh, one of the cashiers for their name just to pray for them. And so this it was different. It's different for me to re to really, truly live a life of prayer. So that for me, that that's that's how that spoke to me, because it, it's totally different. You don't. People don't put their knees, their head between their knees to pray. They don't do that. They don't. So then um, verse 43, it talks about <clears throat> how his servant, he told his servant to go out to look towards the sea. So the servant went, he looked, he came back, told Elijah, I don't see anything. And um, Elijah told him to go back and look several times. And the servant saying that, uh, you don't see anything. That's just kind of like we we us looking with our um natural eye, not seeing God do anything. But there's that I know y'all know this song. It's a song that says, um, even though I don't see you moving, you're still working. I, I think it's Maverick City. But same same thing but you know we still can't be discouraged by that because we know who God is we know what he can do he can do the impossible and um others around us may doubt and that can you know be contagious and trickle down onto us because we see their doubt and that just discourages us but he was still persistent he was still persistent. He didn't even care what the servant said. Like, regardless of what you say, I know what's about to happen or what's coming, I should say. And so his faith was on a whole nother level. He had faith. He had great expectation. That expectation pretty much is faith. And so uh, the beginning of the chapter talks about how, uh, like Mama Viv talked on Tuesday, and Miss Teresa mentioned it, how um, there was rain no sorry a drought for three years and I feel like the drought is necessary the drought is the the tough times the drought is you know those those challenging trials that we experience and it just draws us closer to God it it's for a reason it's for a purpose it it strengthens us it matures us in different areas whatever area it is that you need strengthening in <clears throat> and it also it get rid of it, it gets rid of stuff in us um they were what was it in chapter no it was still, it was chapter 18 so they were talking about how Elijah 
Elijah was, um, he gathered all the prophets of Baal and pretty much they, they, they got what they were supposed to get basically. And, you know, once he executed them or got rid of the prophets of Baal, then the rain came and those three years, and you know, another thing was three years and seven years, they have a similar significance. When I was looking up three years also means um, completeness, but I, it, it doesn't seem like it's on the same level as the number seven definition of completeness, perfect, perfection. But anyway, he got rid of the prophets of Baal. And that's when the rain came. So the God always has to like extract stuff from us. And, you know, we have to um, be purged of those things that are hindering us, that are stag staggering us, um, that are holding us back from where God wants us to be so that we can really be in a position to receive the rain. And I'll speak for myself. There was a time where a lot of y'all know that me and my husband, we've been trying to have a baby or start a family. Because I don't think I just want one baby. I don't want just one baby. And um, so it was uh, when we first started trying the first couple of years. Um, it's, we're going on about five years now. And the first maybe like two or three years was tough. It was tough. And I went through a season where even my niece, she had her child. I could not be as happy for her as I wanted to be because of what we were experiencing. And so it was even more tough because, you know, photos were being exchanged, videos were being exchanged. And, and I'm just like, oh, my gosh, they weren't even trying, Lord. And we over here trying. <laughs> And so it was tough. It was really tough. Not even going to lie, but the Lord had to, he had to, I, I had to get that out. He had to get rid of that. So I am very grateful. That was, um, I don't know how my husband felt, but that's just how I felt, but that it was hard. And then you see your coworkers getting pregnant, you know, other family members getting pregnant. It, it was hard. And now I'm in a season where I can celebrate people without feeling any kind of way. And like uh, my former <clears throat> my former coworker from Chase, she got pregnant and they weren't even trying. And I didn't feel any kind of way whatsoever. I even put together a little mini baby shower for her. And to me, that's growth and going in the right direction. And so that was my... Uh, getting rid of my extracting of what needed to go for me to move forward in whatever God has for me and the journey that he has me on right now. Um, and it could even be like Minister Teresa mentioned last night, uh, slothfulness, uh, stagnation, laziness, anything like that. But extraction was a big word for me. And so, and now that, you know, I got past all that, the Lord confirmed my prayer that he heard my prayer, but through my mom, she don't know that. <laughs> she don't know that. But, and then Dr. Samantha too, she confirmed me. I shared this with Minister Teresa when we were driving, <clears throat> she got confirmed it. And I'm like, it's been five years, but it's going to happen. I know it's coming. And it's not even just, you know, just us having kids, but it's just, you know, what the Lord has showed me in ministry, business. I've had business ideas in my phone for years and he's shown me visions of what it's going to look like. I know it's going to happen. But Minister Teresa said something to me. He's like, she said, God told, God told her to tell me that it's still some things that has to get in order. And, um. It's, it, it makes sense. It made complete sense because I'm like, Lord, what, why we can't, why, why you don't want us to be parents yet? And it's like, you, you know, we want things when we're not ready for it, but then you really start to sit back and think like, well, what is it? What, what is it? And so that extraction, that, um, that drought, it has to happen. It has to happen. 
in your families, your marriages, your businesses, uh, what else? Anything. I mean, anything, your spiritual growth, anything. And uh, yeah, so every time I see a, this one picture of my husband when he was in high school in his football uniform, I see my sons. Sons. And I'm like, oh, these boys gonna be handsome, man. So, you know, like it that's that, that's that expectation, that's that faith that I have that I know is gonna happen. It's gonna happen. So um, yeah, okay, so verse 44, <clears throat> verse 44, the seven time. Again, seven is that number of completion and perfection. And so Elijah said, Go look. And the servant came back and said, I saw a little cloud. A little cloud rising and um I was talking to my mom last week and she said something that really stuck to me and she said God is a promise keeper he is a promise keeper he's a way maker a miracle worker and a promise keeper and I thought that was it aligned she had no idea that I was doing this today she had no idea what the scripture was. So when she said that, I was like, wow, that's that little cloud. That is that little cloud. So it was a beautiful reminder that even though we don't see anything right now, that little cloud is still there. That's that promise. And then, um, sorry, I'm trying not to cry and because I'm nervous. You're doing good. You're doing good. You're good. Let them use you, Ray. This is so good. Sorry, no, I want to go back. Uh to verse 44. Elijah kept telling his servant to go look because, like I say, he had great faith, he had expectation, and he knew who God was. And God had already told him the word back at the beginning of chapter 18. He said, I'm the rain is soon coming. You know, God's soon is different from our soon most of the time, but still it's soon. And so um he was waiting for the word of God to manifest, which is why he kept telling his servant to go back and go back, go back. I know it's gonna happen, it's just a, a matter of when. And so when the heavy rain came, started off with something little, but then that heavy rain came. And the rain doesn't have to be, you know, financial blessing or uh, material things. For me, that that heavy rain was literally like Minister Chisa was talking about um, our measure, our measure. And, you know, the ankle deep, the knee deep, the waist deep and going all in. For me, that heavy rain was going all in. And uh, because I have... I have never spent this much time with the Lord. I have never indulged myself and consumed myself with the word and his presence and prayer and really and, and sharing what I learned with people. So for me, that is that is a heavy range for me. And then I th and from that comes, you know, the other stuff, you know, of course, the kids and, you know, the expansion of our businesses and our families and, and the provision and the blessings and the healings and all that, that that as well as a heavy rain. But for me, the beginning of that heavy rain is really um, spending more time with God and growing, maturing myself. So when the kids come, I can teach them boys how to pray. You know what I mean? Because I've never realized the power of prayer at all. So, um, yeah, my, again, I just want to encourage y'all and myself um, to just keep looking because that little rain cloud is coming. Amen.